as someone who teaches astronomy and quantum physics, watching the total solar eclipse of 2024 was a must-do thing for me. I was one of about a million people who poured into Buffalo on April 8 to witness this event. The drive home was 10 hours of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Next morning, the New York Times revealed that there wasn't a single reported incident of road rage on that day. What was it that made people so peaceful that afternoon? Could it be the awe that they had just experienced? <laughs> Dr. Keltner, a psychologist who wrote a book on awe, defines it as the emotion we experience when we encounter vast mysteries that we do not understand. And if you want a visual demonstration of awe, this is what it looks like on the face of my grandson, Murdo. Have you noticed how often kids have this look on their face? That's what we need to do more of. Now, Keltner claims that a positive experience of awe gives us the feeling of being part of something much larger. By dissolving our boundaries and taking focus away from the self, all makes it easier to connect with others. The calming effect of the eclipse couldn't have lasted for more than a day. Our experiences of all these days are infrequent and short-lived. They arise mostly from attending concerts and sporting events, or going to places like the Grand Canyon. If all is to help bring humanity together, then it needs to have a constant, ongoing influence on us. Ever-present awe may have been easier to experience in ancient times when everything was a mystery. But in our current culture, isolated from nature and immersed in technology, sustained awe is hard to come by. And without awe, to elevate our thinking, we tend towards material pursuits. It is little surprise then that ecological disasters and human conflicts plague our world today. It was the awe of the night sky that inspired me to study physics. But over time, I have come to realize that the real power of awe lies in its potential to bring harmony to our troubled world. It is this insight that I want to share with you today. I believe that cultivating an interest in the science of how our universe works is the easiest way to integrate awe into your daily lives. And if you grew up thinking that science is not your thing, consider a different perspective. Science is not awful. It is full of awe. Could it be that a simple hyphen can help us reimagine science? Or well, more seriously, I'm not asking you to go back to school or become a scientist. You can achieve a state of lasting awe by following three simple steps. The first step is to reawaken your childhood curiosity. <laughs> Do you ever wonder why bubbles are always spherical? Why the sky is blue? Why stars twinkle? 
or why flowers come in so many different colors. The second step is to become more observant of your surroundings. There are miracles hiding in every nook and cranny. Do you notice the birds building their nests twig by twig? Do you follow a line of ants to see how they find a way around every obstacle? Have you ever looked at a spider waving its delicate web? And the third step, the most important one, is to get inspired by reflecting on how these mysteries connect to your life. When you find that trees use a network of fungal roots to warn each other of danger, do you wonder about your own interdependence with other life forms? When you learn that even the humble dung beetle uses the Milky Way in the sky to find its way home. Do you reflect on your own connection to the universe? There are wonders that we cannot observe with our eyes. Quantum physics tells us that atoms are not hard particles, but wispy constellations of energy. And empty space is not a vacuum. It's a boiling soup of energy that pops in and out of existence. Awe is also woven into our vast universe. Just look at the images from the Webb Space Telescope. Gargantuan clouds of gas giving birth to new stars. Fiery cones of light bursting out from a solar system in the making. Exploding supernovae seeding our galaxy with the elements of life. We even have photos of black holes where time itself is believed to come to an end. 14 billion years ago, our universe exploded into existence in a flash of fire and light that we call the Big Bang. We are still constantly bathed by its faint afterglow called the cosmic microwave background. This light was detected in 1964 by a horn-shaped antenna that still stands a couple of miles down the road in Homedell, New Jersey. It was almost dismantled to make room for condos, but a huge outcry from ordinary citizens across the world has ensured that it will continue to supply ore for generations to come. Our new creation story adds a fresh dimension to awe. We were not parachuted into our universe. We grew out of it. Each star, planet, rock, and life form is either our ancestor or a distant cousin. The universe holds us in an embrace of kinship and confers on us a deep sense of belonging. It also begs the question of what part each of us should play to keep our cosmos evolving. Throughout cosmic history, cohesive forces have brought parts together to create new holes. Gravity fused atoms into stars. Chemical affinity joined molecules into living cells. A need for survival congregated cells into organisms. All pervasive awe might be the evolutionary force 
to bring humans together into an earth-wide community. Perhaps the overarching purpose of human life is to spread all across the globe. Thomas Berry, a great scholar and cultural historian stated, the human venture depends absolutely on this quality of awe and reverence and joy in all that lives and grows upon the earth. The next total eclipse in the U.S. won't happen until 2044. Don't wait till then to experience awe again. Awaken your curiosity. Be more observant and find your role in bringing unity and harmony to the world. What is at stake is the next chapter of a 14 billion year story. And if that feels a little abstract, then consider doing it for your grandchildren. <laughs> Here is my other grandson, Ash. He inspires me to play my role in the universe each and every day. Thank you.